We are actually in the Folk and Self-Taught Art Gallery in the High Museum. Um, and so the first piece that we we're gonna look at is actually a 3D piece um, of art, it's a sculpture. So what I'd like for you guys to do, as you do your 30 second look on this one, instead of standing on one side, I want you to kind of take a stroll around the work of art, look at all the details. And I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to stroll first, and then we're gonna actually talk about what you see after that 30 second stroll, okay? All right, you may begin. It's like musical chairs, just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so let's share our thinking. It's a lot going on in this particular um, scene here. So just talk to me. What did you notice? What do you notice as you walked around this particular piece of work? One of the things that I, I saw that I, when I originally looked at it, I thought that the mountain lion was trying to get to the lamb. But in walking around and seeing it from all points of view, I'm not so sure now whether he's going after the lamb or he's going after the man. It looks like he's knocked over the man as it was going after. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just see a lot of strength. Uh -huh. Strength in the animals, strength in the man, strength in the staff that's holding things up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of strength. Where's the contrast that you see in this particular um, piece? So you said strength. You gave strength in the animals in, in those particular two. Um, where's the contrast to that particular strength? The lamb the almost lamb. seems un unfazed. Okay. Like he, he almost feels that I'm protected, so I'm okay. So he doesn't have that same look of either shock or that vicious look as, as mm -hmm. much as the other um, parts of the sculpture. You said vicious. I'm going to play on that word. What made you use the word vicious? What about that? I just, I see teeth. <laughs> and so I see teeth going towards or attacking maybe the shepherd, and so it just conveys a sense of something that is an urgent attack and it, it looks like it's not um, going to be something that's easy to ward off but it's not something that he can't handle it looks like okay what else any other notices I see protection mm -hmm. I see and what makes you say that the shepherd is protecting the lamb okay and then the dog and I wasn't sure if it was a dog but it has a collar that says shepherd it says shepherd, German shepherd perhaps, mm -hmm. is protecting the man by attacking the lion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any other noticing? I noticed words. I saw friend and then I think in need. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so those words made me think about the relationship of all the lamb and the shepherd, the shepherd and the dog, kind of to play off that protection. Mm -hmm. I that struggle. Okay. Um, and I see a strength in like the limbs of the body, the arm and the legs. Um, and then I do see the protection of the lamb and um, that he does not seem aware really of the struggle that is going on above him. That he just seems unfazed by what is happening above him. Okay. And so this particular um, piece of art when you heard me saying don't touch don't touch this was um, created in 1888 this is really old um, and it's awesome to kind of see how it has preserved and, and, and kind of persevered through time in terms of that um, work of art and so um, you said that you saw in writing down there that it said a friend and so that's the title of this particular work of art it actually is a friend in need is a friend indeed mm -hmm. and so who do you think is needing a friend in this particular work i think you could say obviously the lamb does but shepherd could be the friend in need yeah. too because the dog is coming to his rescue multiple multiple friends in need. Okay, and so Henry Church is the artist who actually um, created this and um, he was actually self-taught. Okay, and so um, he 
with all the texture and all that's going on in the story that he's wanting us to walk away with, what do you think that message is? We know a friend, we know the title is a friend in need is a friend indeed, but what's that message that you think he would want someone who's observing his art this many years later, that he would want us to be able to walk away to tell to others? And I think my focus has shifted to the lamb, but now I almost think with the title, sometimes you're unaware that you need a friend. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you know, the shepherd of course needs someone to help him and so he has the dog there. But because the lamb is so unaware, maybe it's showing us the message of sometimes you are not aware that you need friends and help, but you do. And then sometimes you know you need help and then that help is there. And I didn't see that before, so. Friends can come in all sizes and mm -hmm. shapes. <laughs> And species. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? And we make sacrifices for our friends. Mm -hmm. You know, he's sacrificing possibly a limb mm -hmm. as he's kind of reaching out. And then the dog is attacking the lion too, risking the lion kind of turning on him. So we take care and sacrifice for our friends. All right. Any other noticings about that particular work of art? Anything that you would add value to the conversation? Maybe something we haven't noticed before or spoke on before. All right. Well, thank when we're talking visual literacy, these artists are trying to tell a story and get us to walk away from this with something. So as we're sitting here looking at the colors, and you said that maybe the color is to show distance. Mm -hmm. What are some other reasons if we think about the story they're trying to tell? Might they be using color? Darkness or negative, moving into the light, positive. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. The darkness and the ruggedness, it looks hard, it looks difficult, it looks cumbersome. Mm -hmm. And as they move, it gets greener and lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other noticings? I noticed the bright color on the, that gentleman's, I don't know if it's a jacket or, okay. or what he's wearing, but it makes me look at the cow too, which seems really bright in the okay. foreground. Mm -hmm. How do you think this artist used texture to add to the message? Well, it, it's, the texture seems kind of gritty, especially in the foreground. Uh, when you're looking at it, I mean, all of that area where the cows are and the, the gentlemen are, it's, it's very worn looking, like it's been used over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so if you had to think, what do you think might be happening beyond the scene that this particular artist? And so when we say beyond, out here mm -hmm. and beyond that we can't see, so the parts that we can't see, what story, what do you think? What details could we add to our story as we think about that? Which makes me think maybe these people are connected to that city or that town and there's something going on. Maybe this is their career and they have a family back home that they're okay. going to go to. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Mm -hmm. So what makes you say maybe... Um, career. Well, that guy has a staff and or something that he's leaning on, so it looks like he's taking care of the cattle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and thinking about when this could be made, that would have been a career that some people would have had. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also the number of cattle that they have, there are not that many cattle there, which would say to me that would be somebody that's got a farm nearby versus somebody that's driving cattle from one far location to another where they would have a lot of cattle that they would want to move. So think just for a second, what do you think the message is that this artist might want us to walk away with? So I'm going to give you the title. The title of this particular um, work of art is A Bit of Roman Aqueduct. It was um, created in 1852. So if you think about historically, we're talking turn of the century. Um, a lot was happening 
in terms of transitioning to a more modern, when we talk turn of the century, more modern society. Um, with that bit of information, what do you think? What might be a story that he's wanting us to walk away with? Well, you know, no, go ahead. Go ahead. See the agrarian kind of people here that have been land keepers for so long and they're moving towards a city or a town or a village. And um, is it something that they want or choose or have to do? So the brightness, the light could be leading us to a positive place and maybe he's depicting this as a more negative place okay. where that might take them. Or is he gonna stay with the creek and, and move to the left or is he gonna continue to move towards over the bridge and to the village? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? It's almost like the artist wants us to know that, um, like I, I feel like this is very peaceful and serene, this image. Um, there, people are employed and there's food to eat. So it's almost like America is a prosperous, alive place that's calm and serene. So I wonder, especially if, it, if it's what you said, you know, that's almost the message that he wants us to think when we think of America. That if, in fact, we um, accept and agree, potentially, with um, all that modernizing that's happening at the turn of the century, then potentially, um, as I looked at this, I thought, hmm, I wonder if he was trying to show um, now life is it's difficult and, and hard and we have to work really hard but if we make this transition to modernization look at what's beyond because the mountain for me symbolizes um, kind of the hope the growth the growth piece of that Now we're in the American Art Galleries here inside of the High Museum, our beautiful High Museum. Um, and we want to take a look at, for the 912 group, um, one of the works of art uh, that we've looked at. And this is, uh, before I give you the title of it, what I'd like for you to do is actually just kind of take, take a minute, 30 seconds. Um, I want you to do a 30 second glance to look at the two works of art. They do complement each other. Um, they are made by the same artist, and without reading and kind of looking here at the descriptor, I would like for you guys to just tell me, what do you notice? What do you think is happening there? I notice a sense of sadness in the first picture. The people are looking down, um, and the landscape is, is brown. It's deprived almost. And the second picture makes your, it draws your eye to the picture because of the colors, the bright colors, um, the way that people are postured, they look excited or they're actively working in their community. Okay. Anybody else? Something to add to that? I see, if you look at the character, the people in the first painting and then the second painting they're they're almost you know there's a guy in a blue shirt with yellow pants and a hat and looking at the difference in his posture in the first picture and the second painting and there I see that if you compare the postures of the people who are dressed similarly you can really see um, just that hopelessness versus confidence or relaxation okay so if you had to think of one word to really capture what the artist's message is, because clearly this artist is telling us a story, right? Mm -hmm. And it's trying to give us maybe both sides of the story, but I also think we have to consider it's through the eyes and the lens of the artist. And so as we look at these, um, before I give you the title and kind of some background information about the works of art, I wanted you to just really think about, hmm, in looking at what's there, is it a stereotypical? Is it caricature? Is it, is it, is it actual? Is it factual to to reality, um, just think about that for a minute. And then when you're ready, go ahead and kind of spirit share for me. I see more of a stereotypical picture up above, poor, sad, downtrodden to clean, new, and fresh.
fresh below, happy, clean, new, fresh above, old, dirty, downtrodden. So I think it's definitely um, telling us a story that may not be actual, but okay. this is this is what I think is happening. Okay. Anybody else? It makes me wonder if the artist wants us to look at the housing too, because the house is here, there's brick, you know, it seems clean, they're not sagging lines, but in the top, the house is sagging, it looks like it's falling apart. I wonder if that is something the artist, he's t trying to tell us a message in that way. Okay, so I hear housing. What are some other layers that might be in there in terms of maybe the artist's message? I and think if you look at the sky, that's that. It, there's a, it's bright. The, there's clouds in both, but this one's bright and blue, and that one's dark and gray. Almost like there's a storm mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. top one. Mm -hmm. What do you think the storm might symbolize? Using evidence from those that work of art, what might it symbolize for us? Mm -hmm. Well, it's living conditions. I mean, you have two separate living conditions there. In the first one, you have very poor living conditions. Uh, you have the sagging house, you have outhouses, uh, you have um, people that are just from their whole body posture and everything else, the living conditions in life is not good. As you look at the bottom one, you've got people that are you know, looking hopeful, they're looking purposeful. Uh, there's a young boy going to school. There's a young a, a man with his, I guess, lunchbox. Kids are playing. People are, are it, it seems to be much better living condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think hard times versus maybe better times mm -hmm. um, would be a contrast in the two. And I think the, the landscapes too, as well as the skies. I mean, you've got the barren grounds versus the green grass and the flowers. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's the same period of, t of time? I think it very well could, could be. be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so just to give you a little background on this one. So this one took um, about a year for him to create both of these. Um, the artist's name is Hale Woodruff. And so he commissioned this art when um, in 1941, the year between 19, of 1941 to the beginning of 1942. Um, and this is this thank you present. It was a thank you present to um, Mr. Terrell, who was the housing commissioner at the time, who really pushed to change the nature and the essence of um, the housing situation here um, in our lower income housing in Atlanta. And so he painted it to say, thank you for your progressive thinking. Thank you for shifting um, and, and believing that we all deserve, you know, that equal opportunity. Um, and so he showed a really drastic difference of, obviously, this was not what the housing um, place looked like prior to, but um, his message, he wanted and used his technique and the color and um, even their faces, um, in this case, to show that potentially they weren't pleased with their housing situation and then it changed and look at how the people themselves flourished. Um, but we also have to obviously take into account that I think you, you spoke about, maybe it was not necessarily real, um, that we know that one, all people didn't necessarily walk around moping like this, right? So it also shows a strength and a resilience um, in the characters. But this was actually his way of saying thank you to the city of Atlanta um, for continuing to improve the city itself. Another work of art still in our American Art Gallery. Um, Lots going on in this particular piece of art. So I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. And then I want you to just turn to the person closest to you and just kind of share what your thinking is about this particular art and what you notice. What are you noticing that's happening here? What do you notice that's going on in terms of the details of this particular painting?
Okay, so as you look at this, how did the artist um, help us to really kind of get into the world of what a seamstress might do? What did the artist do in order to help us to jump into this particular painting? What techniques were used do you think that helped to tell this particular story? One of the things that keeps jumping out of me is, is her hands and, and the size of her hands and, and what she's, not necessarily what she's doing with them, but it's like her hands are such, such a vital part of what she's doing. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. And if you look at her frame, her frame is small. Yeah. Her hands and her shoulders are oversized, Another right? For, really, for what we might typically see in a woman. What else? Another thing that jumped out at me is the expression on her face. It's such an intense look. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much focus in, in the expression on her face. And I, I don't know whether that's due to the complexity of the work that she's having to do, okay. or whether that's due to the amount of work that she's having to do. You know? What makes you say amount of work? She looks, she's working on one, in the white garment that she's got right there, but if you look behind her, there's some red that's waiting, and then there's some more red up on the shelf. It looks like there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. Hang mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do we notice? What else jumped out at you all about this particular one? So we have the hands. We have potentially a large amount of work. Mm -hmm. um, she's definitely focused. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's definitely focused. What else? What else is happening around that might tell us a little bit about her. Look at the scene. What else might tell us a little bit about the woman sewing? Maybe she likes to read. She looks like she has a plant she takes care of, so maybe she's, you know, she's very, she's careful about her work and she's careful about tending that plant. And mm -hmm. We can tell that she takes care of herself. Her, yeah. her, um, her apron is well ironed. Her hair is done. Her earrings are on. She's, um, her face is taken care of. So mm -hmm. she's not just coming in unkept right. to, to get some work done. She takes care of herself mm -hmm. okay. and has the ability to do so. And although she looks like she's got a lot of work, I mean, relatively speaking, her work area is well kept. So she mm -hmm. looks very well organized. Okay. What else do you notice in that particular piece? The man in the, the lamp. The man in the lamp. You don't have men in your light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> what are you, who is that? Who is that guy? So of course I first thought it was like a supervisor mm -hmm. or okay. a watchman, somebody watching over, leaning back with the window behind him, making sure the work's getting done. Um, that was my first. What made you say supervisor? The stance of the person in the chair. It doesn't look like they're working. It looks like they're kind of leaning back and watching with um, the city in the window behind them, the city life going by. Okay. Okay. Good lead in. The title of this um, is Alma Sewing. So this is Alma. And that gentleman in the light bulb is actually Francis Chris, the artist. Okay. Um, Francis Chris used that technique. You will find in his works of art, he's probably in there somewhere in some shape, form, or fashion. It's not always his physical being, but sometimes it's his, you'll see his hand with the paint, with the paintbrush within the art. Um, and this took place, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was 1935, 1930s. So we're talking around Great Depression. So it almost tells a different story. It's a different side of the Great Depression is what are we accustomed to seeing um, when we see pictures and images of the Great Depression? Despair. Despair, Despair desperation, lack of jobs, no income coming in, struggle. Um, and we see, if we think about our conversation, we've already talked about, she had work. She had work um, and so, she was busy during that time and she had a workspace. This is probably, um, to me, it looks like a small shop, mm -hmm. not necessarily the home. Mm -hmm. um, so just some, some things to think about. But Francis Chris is actually creating his work of art from within the work of art. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Mm 
Any other questions about this particular one? Any other noticings that you all have? The only thing, that, the other thing that jumped at me is the brooch or the necklace mm -hmm. that seems a little bit off kilter, but it's large. I can't really quite tell what it is, but it pulls my eye right there. Okay. All right. Thank you.